So our next storyteller, and we should have thought to have tissues, and I'm sorry about that. We, um, if anyone has them and would like to share, it might be a nice thing to do for this evening. Um, our next storyteller is um, Hussam Analis was born and raised in Damascus, Syria, and attended medical school in Aleppo, Syria. He later completed his medical training in neighboring Turkey, where he worked for the Union of Medical Care and Relief Organizations to develop a coordinated response to chemical attacks within Syria. He plans to further develop this public health work by pursuing his Master of Public Health at the Bloomberg School, where he is the recipient of the dual Syrian Master of Public Health and SOMAR scholarship. He is here tonight with his beautiful wife, an adorable little girl. Please welcome him. I've always wanted to be a doctor. Helping others was really my passion. I grew up in Damascus, surrounded by a great family, surrounded with love and support. I still remember in 2006, my mother hugging me tightly and my father dancing when we got the letter from Aleppo University that I was accepted to study medicine. With a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, they said goodbye to me with some worries and some tears, because I was leaving them from far southern Syria to far northern Syria to study medicine in Aleppo. And as smooth as it should be, I spent my first six year, five years doing good in the university, prepared in 2012 to graduate after finishing my sixth year. But because of the uprising, the Syrian uprising against the Syrian government, the impact of that uprising started to affect Aleppo city. And as in other places around Syria, the way the security forces and the army faced the protesters and faced the protests, it was the same scenario in, in, in Aleppo. So they invaded the campus, they killed people, they didn't allow them to go to hospitals, they arrested people from their beds on the hospitals, and this is what I had. I had two choices. Either to ignore what was happening, pretending that nothing is important, continue my education, graduate to fulfill my dream, or take a step further and act as a real doctor, helping people during demonstrations and leave my education. It was not a very hard choice to choose the later. I left my education. I met some of my friends, trusted friends, close friends, with some professors from the university, and we created what we called the Light of Life medical team. It was very dangerous to, to create such team, so we had to change our names. We used unregistered phone numbers, so we can be as hidden as possible from the government, but yet as visible as possible to people. We were able during a few months to save tens of lives, secure safe referrals to a lot of injured people from their injured side to hospitals, provide them with more complicated and more advanced medical services. We did what we thought was a great job. Until mid of June 2012, when three of our team members were arrested by the Syrian government. We didn't know what we had to do, but we knew one thing. We should continue to work because a lot of people were depending on us. In 24th of June, 2012, at 7 a.m., one of the team members and a very close friend to me called me at 7 a.m., crying like crazy, telling me, Hussam, they're gone. I didn't know what happened, so I rushed to him, and I knew the story. The day after, I was in front of hundreds of people during one of the demonstrations, wearing my lab coat, putting my stethoscope, 
and I told the story. I said, yesterday we lost three heroes, Basil, Musab, and Hazem. Those three were always around you, wanted to help you and save your lives, but the Syrian government didn't like that. So they arrested them, they tortured them, they extracted their nails, they broke their limbs, they shoot them in the head, and then they burned them. They wanted to tell us through them that this is what will happen to anyone who will try to help. This is a new start for us. This is when we will stand with you against that government, and we will help you. And if they died for you, then it's our honor to die for you as well. And this was a new start, where we expanded the team, we started working in more dangerous areas, helping other peoples, not only in the city itself, but even in the countrysides. Until one day I was with my close friend, the same one, getting some grocery from inside the city, and where we were surprised by three armed individuals. They asked us for our documents, and I had three things. An ID, personal ID, indicates that I'm from Damascus. A medical student ID, and a very small notebook with a list of medical equipments. For them, that was enough. That's one of them raised his machine gun on my head and took me to the detention center. There, they took all our belongings and they hand, handed two small papers stamped with blue with some numbers I cannot remember, but I remember my friend telling me, Hussam, we are under arrest. Do you think it's our time to be burned? I was so afraid, but I couldn't speak. A few minutes later, they dragged us down to a dungeon where they forced us to take off all our clothes and then separated us, tightened my hand, closed my eyes, forced me to lay down on my face, and then start beating me. Beating hurted me, but what hurted me more was that they were expressing how good for them was to beat a doctor. And the only question that they were asking who are the other doctors you were working with? After that, after beating me on every spot on my body that can hurt, they dragged me to a prison cell. It was an empty room, completely from anything, but 53 people. Full of death, dark room. I was recognized as a doctor with all the stuff that they had. They shared their food, which was not enough, and they p allowed me to sit in a place that is, the that is the best place in the whole room. But what was killing me was a boy, 13 years old boy, sitting in the other corner who came to me and said, Doctor, I was trying to run away from some agents and they shoot me in my abdomen. They operated me, and the next day they brought me to here. I, I feel huge pain. Can you help me? And he was vomiting and crying all the time. And I said, no. I spent 16 days when one day someone called my name. I went out, and there was one of the detectors. He said, can you see that patient? He is vomiting all the time. I checked him, and I knew that part of the torture session was beating someone on his head hardly. So I checked him, I said, he probably suffered from an internal bleeding in his brain. So if you don't take him to the hospital, he will die. And he looked at him and said, go to hell. One day after, later, he died. On the same day, Someone called my name, and it was like a national holiday because it was Ramadan feast. I didn't expect anything, so I went out with my friend, and we were shocked that they are going to release us. I didn't know why, but I found myself 
outside for the first time after 17 days, taking that clean air and breathing again. And I said, I'm not going to let down all those people behind me. And I will continue. I called my family, and my, I, the first thing that I heard from my mom, crying, saying, why you did that to me? And I traveled immediately from Aleppo to Damascus. I saw how stressful the whole period was on them, emotionally and financially. At the end, in a corrupted system, it's not easy to get someone from death. I was watching what was happening in Syria from Damascus, surrounded by my family, but I couldn't do anything. The security fist in the, in the city was so tense that I was afraid to do anything. But at a certain point, I said, no, I will not stay. I had that chance not to stay near my family. I have to do something. And I planned to run away from my family. And it was on 30th of November, 2012, 6 a.m., I wrote a letter to my mom, was prepared to go out when I noticed that they locked the door and hid the keys. While I was looking, they figured out that I was do trying to go out. They start shouting and yelling, trying to convince me not to go, but I couldn't. So I took the keys, ran to the door, and this is when my mom rushed to the kitchen, brought the biggest knife in the house, put it in my hand, rose it up to her chest, and said, kill me before going. I cannot tolerate living every minute of my life waiting someone to call me and say, Hussam is dead. I told her, mom, you know, you raised me to do this, and you know it's right. And she said, well, it's right, but what about me? Please think about me. And I said, no, mom, you know my, you know my decision. And I went. And I spent two years in what was considered as the most dangerous city in the world, which was Aleppo. I lived in a hospital that, were, that was targeted by the government in daily basis. At a certain point, I left the city. I moved to Turkey. I had a chance to continue my education. And my family was always beside me, supporting me. And then I got the chance to come here and study this MPH. And I do believe that I still have the same commitment to my country, to my people, to help them, not only with my passion, but also with the knowledge that I'm going to get from this program. Thank you.